Okay guys, we're here with Jim Owens, Shelby and Mustang brand manager, marketing manager. Guy's been a Mustang enthusiast forever. He's gonna take us through some of this stuff and show us what makes the GT500 great. Now we already experienced it on track, so I kinda know it's great. We drag raced it, we road raced it, we drove it on the street, but parts, it's, you, it's really about the parts, You right? experience the sum of the parts and engineering for right. the Ford Performance ones. And what we wanna take you and some of our consumers through is what we are in those parts that make that greater whole. Right, and so back in the day, years ago, you got the car from Ford or whoever, and you turned to the aftermarket. These days, I mean, kind of Ford gives you the goods right out of the gate. So first off, this carbon, carbon fiber wheel. So Carbon Revolution, who makes our wheels for the Ford GT, GT350, and the GT500. This thing is, is light. Light, and a cool story off of it is this is a 20 inch wheel, and it's wider than the GT350R, right? So in the 20 GT350R with has 19, outside diameter and a little bit skinnier width, right? right? Now, obviously now, it weighs the same. They built the 20 inch wheel, really? 20 inch outside diameter and wider at the same weight of the wheel that's on the 19 inch 2020 Shelby GT350R. So Unsprung rotational so mass. We're talking about rotating mass. So you have an example here for us, right? Yes. So, so show kind me. of interesting. We like to do it the first have you do the aluminum wheel. All right. Right? So that you can get a feel and we yeah. say, okay. Wheel what, of fortune. What will you do? Wheel of fortune. Exactly. Vanna White with my fingers out here. What you want to do is see how much it takes to start rotating that. What inertia. And you kind of feel that. If right. you walk over here, we'll have them turn and spin this and the inertia that it takes because that's rotational mass that is lower is so much lower so and under braking oh my god <laughs> you get to slow it You're down having a lot to slow faster. that big, big heavy thing. wheel so the best weight for me to lose and for my dad bod is right here right the best weight for a car to lose rotating is unsprung mass. rotational mass right so you have an example of the brake rotor right yeah so on our brake rotor um what the what we do with it, when you build 760 horsepower and capable of doing zero to 30 in 3.3 seconds, right. the next thing you need to be able to do, stop, stop it. it, right? So what we did is the same type of design off the GT350 rotor right. with the two piece with the center hub, but we have over 16.5 inches on that rotor which is larger than the outside diameter of the actual 67 wheel. And you can see when you take this piece off, we cut it here so that you can see when the heat expands, what ends up happening is this allows the air to cool through the brake, but then also allows to keep the same percentage of that metal underneath the pad so that you continue to maintain that stopping ability. Right, and it's, it's hot out here and we didn't feel any kind of brake fade or anything like that. Yeah, and when we've been doing our testing on the track, there has been almost zero brake fade over for our track sessions. Cool, so you have something else that's interesting that I want to take a look at, so let's Absolutely. take a Absolutely, let's go and do that. Try that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jim, you brought 25 or so examples of the new GT500 for us to drive, like we said, on the street, on the strip, and on the road course, and just to take around and photograph, whatever. And I've been to a lot of these press launches, a lot of different events with you especially. One of the things you guys don't generally do is bring engineering stuff prototype stuff. So why bring this buck to this uh, press launch? So it will be here for the press launch. And it'll be here for our North American track tour as well for our consumers. Right. But what we wanted to kind of demonstrate is the innovation and technology that went in to this new 2020 GT500. Right. And the best way to show it was visibly with the aero buck so that we could figure out how we could improve the performance. So it, is, when you, is this a car that goes in the wind tunnel? Or? This is one that goes in the wind tunnel, not only in Detroit with our slow speed wind tunnel, right. but down into Charlotte to the high speed wind tunnel with the rolling floor right. so that we can begin to get it. And if you take a look and I'll show you the graphic, Apologize for this, I'm sure you'll edit it. We have the graphic over here where it shows the air going yeah, we through. have that. All right, so we have the computer graphic, right, where we think it's gonna go. Then you take it into the wind tunnel to see in the slow speed, is that in fact what you see? Right. Then you take it down to the track to see if it behaves that way, then to the high speed wind tunnel. And in that process, you learn, oh no, maybe I need to make that splitter wicker a little bit wider. 
right? So the splitter wicker down here. Maybe I need to make that a little deeper. In the old, before 3D printing, you'd have to retool apart and wait weeks before you can do it. Now you go back, this is a 3D printed part that they used to actually improve the aero performance. And is that built in the center in Michigan? Yeah, this is in okay, Michigan. So I've, been in, I've been in that facility. Yes, yeah, you have. A fantastic facility, very high tech. So let's talk us through real quick, I guess, just from the front to the back. Like, this looks like there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in there. So when all of the nose, when Melvin Betancourt, who designed this, needed to design it not only from a beauty standpoint, for like it looks fast standing still, right. but to be able to deliver the air through for cooling and the air out over the top for lower coefficient of drag and on top of it for downforce in the back where you need it. Right. So what they did is they took components, and you can feel this, this is a 3D printed part, to change the airflow to, so when we needed to tool it, what you do is you'd say, okay, I want to change it to this. Before tooling, it would take two or three weeks. Right. Now we can do it overnight. So in the same amount of time, you're able to improve the performance greater by doing it. I mean, you so literally this go, is an you evolution. You go to the track day after day, day. with new parts. Correct. Right. So this, so this here obviously is simulating the rays in the hood. Hood. Yeah. And the contour of the hood. Correct. And then what they had is they changed out the different components in here. And what we ended up with is over a six square foot opening. Now we have a rain tray in there, but you right. take the rain tray out when you're going to the track. And it, so they got to redo these so much faster in a development standpoint that allowed us to increase the performance in the same amount of time. Right, so you could probably, I would imagine when you're building a car like this, because you have budgets that you have to work with it, does that allow you to try more stuff in a shorter period of time and with the same budget? Correct. Because That's a cool. lot of budget is time, right? The engineering it's, time, it's man the power, man time, hours. the time in the wind tunnel, all of that adds up. And if you can swap it over a much shorter period of time, you get longer and greater performance gains over that same period of time, which is more efficient. Awesome. So the heart of the Shelby GT500 is this. 5.2 liters, 760 horsepower. Essentially, it's a race engine. Supercharged, the blower sits underneath down here. It's inverted, so air enters. It comes up through the intercooler, down into the cylinder heads, four valve heads, of course. It's got these really nice looking exhaust manifolds. Check this out, fitting tight. Um, it, it produces a big number for horsepower, but when you roll into the power on this thing from three all the way up to say like 7,500, it's just endless power and torque. It's, power comes on very smooth. Um, something you may be used to in earlier GT500s is that abrupt rush of power that just rams you. This thing connected to the seven speed is really, really smooth. So I think that's probably one of the biggest differences and it gives you the ability to go fast whether you're on the drag strip or on the road course because when it goes through the gears it's fast it's accurate but it's not blasting the tire where you're getting sideways on the gear changes it's smooth out of the hole um, it's not as torquey as the 13 14 engine down low but it makes up for it when it gets up in the revs this thing just pulls and then of course with the seven speed you're always in the power band it's giving you maximum power and torque for the situation that you're in which is really good and that is really useful on the road course too which is one thing that i think it made us pretty fast right out of the gate even though we've never been on this track before because you exit a corner and roll the power on it's already in the right gear you're not having to downshift and um, fumble with the transmission hoping you're in the right gear it's in the right gear somehow it knows roll the power on the upships come smooth it doesn't jerk the car around i've driven some dct cars that Upon upshift, it wants to kick the back out if you're in a corner. Nope, Billy Johnson said, plant the thing to the mat, come off the corner, and let it eat. And that's what we did. So another one of the displays that Ford has for us here at the GT500 press launch is a GT500 turned on its side. And we don't have to go through everything, but you can see some key elements like brake ducting. Here's the splitter, the bottom part of the splitter, all the different coolers, and one of the things that kind of amazes me is the packaging. It's one thing when you build a car in your garage or you take it to a shop and they, they add something on, but they have to be able to build this car on an assembly line. Everything has to be designed and fit 
And when you imagine that they're starting, you know, this body starts as a EcoBoost or a Mustang GT, and then they say, hey, we're gonna do a GT500, and we have to have all this extra content. Well, you gotta be able to fit it in the car. So they not only put the stuff in there, people wonder, oh, why doesn't it make more power? Why don't they do this, why don't they do that? A lot of it boils down to packaging. They do have to have everything fit. So you can see it has a full belly pan on it. Um, you can still see how big the brakes are, aluminum steering knuckles. Um, here's one thing that's interesting, Abe. You can see here how the oil pan integrates to the transmission with these through bolts. So it's more than just bolted at the block. The transmission bolts to the entire engine, including the oil pan. So it adds to uh, the structure. And that, that, they told us, is really helpful in cornering because th things do flex and move. So here's the seven-speed uh, DCT. It's got a built-in oil pump. You can see the exhaust going on here. All the heat shielding and stuff. And through the middle of the car, it's relatively simple. X-pipe, relatively large pipes. These aren't Fox body exhausts, I promise you that. Um, these cars, while they don't have frame connectors, this is kind of like a frame connector, adds rigidity to the structure. Um, again, the side spats. And here's another look. We just saw the metal version of this or on the buck car. So this is an add-on piece that adds aerodynamic downforce. The Sport Cup 2 tires, of course, which are pretty darn grippy. And if you take a look at the pumpkin, zoom in here. So we have all kinds of pumps and sensors going on on the rear axle to provide data to the computer. Um, the torsion differential is in there, which works really, really well. Um, especially if you drive the car properly, which we were taught how to do on track by feeding throttle in to keep the tires planted, which is pretty cool, torsion differential. Uh, it says here, the, you know, axle temperature sensor. And here's your rear diffuser. That again helps airflow through the back of the car. Everything is functional. Ford would not be going through the trouble to design and build and put this on the car if it didn't add downforce or performance. Four mode active exhaust, which I said before we experienced, it's got the quiet mode, it's got sport mode, track mode, and big difference when you flip that switch. Quiet is really quiet, you know, you're on the phone, you got a conference call, you go to the track, or you just wanna hear the V8 thunder, pop that thing into track mode, and it's loud, it's nice. All right, so we're at the back of the car now, and uh, Jim, I, it looks crude to me, but only because I know that based on all these different mounting things and tape that you've tried a lot of stuff on, on this setup. So yeah. tell me what's going on here. So we're at the back of the aero buck and what you'll see here is the wing that is on the handling package, okay. right? So this isn't the carbon fiber track pack, but the handling package. And you see here this 3D printed part, which is the gurney flap. You see how much lower it is? Yes. This was and, one of the- And lower here. Lower here. Right. And what you end up doing is what we ended up testing to say, hey, we still need more downforce. We're okay on coefficient of drag. How do we do it? We kept changing the parts. And what that eventually evolved into is this gurney flap here, where you see how much higher yeah, it is here, over than what we did on the arrow button. Yeah. So that allowed us to do that development in such a short period of time that allowed us to get more performance in that same time period. Right, so three variations of, of the, the wing, wing available yep. on the same car. On the same car, and then so what we could do, and you saw the taping on there, is we'd swap over, that would be the arrow buck for this one. Right. Then it could be the arrow buck for this one. Then it could be the arrow buck for this one. And that allowed us to get more than 390 pound-feet of downforce on the handling package with the gurney flap without decreasing coefficient of drag to slow the car down. That's amazing. And then obviously if you're going full on track, Full on track, the GT4 wing. So we had this already in development. It was racing with the GT4. And what we did is we took that material and turned it into carbon fiber, made it two position adjustable, customer adjustable based on the track that you're going to. Right. And then we have a wrench that we have. You can literally adjust it yourself based off on the rack. So you can see the two piece adjustable here. Amazing. 
race car stuff for the street or for the track or for the track correct now you probably don't want to be driving with your gurney flap on while you're doing the normal street driving right I mean, or at the drag strip or the drag strip yeah the cars that you were running here today didn't have the gurney flap didn't have the splitter wickers why because that's drag that you don't need on a drag strip yep cool well jim thank you so much evan thanks so much we're gonna have lots of fun with these cars over the next couple of years i know it yep